Hello everybody, this is Terry Nance. Welcome to the Armor Bear Awakening. And I pray today is just an incredible day for your life and release the blessings of heaven over you in Jesus name. If you enjoy the broadcast, be sure and subscribe. Go to godsarmorbear.com. You can get the information on our mentoring program and then also having me in if you'd like to bring me in for a conference. But I just speak heaven over you today and I trust that God's just doing some incredible things in your life where the armor bearer is concerned. The armor bearer is not an office. It is an attitude. Uh, it, it's, it's something that God showed me back, uh, years ago in my life that really has set the course for my life in ministry. And this is a revelation for me that God's used me to birth into the body of Christ and it will, it will live into, uh, you know, forever, I trust, as people get a hold of that revelation. And I've done over 500 programs. I am pouring everything I know in 50 years of ministry into the YouTube and in here. And so I just pray that it impacts your life and helps you grow together in unity and love. Nothing gets done without unity. It's very interesting uh, over in Genesis uh, chapter 6, when when God comes down and he he looks and he sees that the men are coming together and they are or maybe in just chapter five they're coming together and they're building this tower to reach to God. Uh, and the next thing he knows, he's like, my goodness, you know, they're in unity and they're in oneness to get together. And you know what? There's nothing going to stop them from, from accomplishing this. And so he said, any confounded the languages, you know, that shows us the power of working together in unity and agreement. And we'll never flow with that until we really truly understand the, the level of spiritual authority. Uh, and there's a scripture here. Let me just give you some things. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, verse 5 through 7, servants, obey, be obedient to them who are your masters according to the f- flesh or your leaders. Uh, with fear and trembling and singleness of heart and unto Christ and not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from your heart, uh, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. If I am going to fulfill my ministry and I'm just telling you, anyone, every one of you in the local church and, and God is, I mean, speaking to so many people right now, you will never accomplish this until you totally see that you're doing it for Jesus. You're not doing it for men because there's going to be difficulties. There's going to be challenges. There are are seasons in the kingdom. There are seasons to plant. There are seasons of growing and there are seasons of reaping. And um, in the season of growing, you've got to keep the pest out of your garden. You, you, you've got to put the right kind of, uh, uh, repellent. And you, I mean, these farmers, they have to do so much work in preparing for the harvest. And that is to preserve the harvest. So in that, in that area, man, as armor bearers and the spirit of an armor bearer, which we are all called to be armor bearers, we have to know that we've got to flow as servants. Uh, the highest ministry there is, it's not, Ooh, I want to be a prophet. Well, go ahead. You can be a prophet. Yes. Flow with it. If you don't have the heart of the servant, it's not going to profit you anything. Uh, you're doing it in a wrong spirit and you're doing it just to manipulate people and, and to benefit you. Well, you're going to stand before God for that. The Bible is very clear here. We're not doing it, uh, also to please men. So, in that, Romans 13, 1 says, let everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. There is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are established from God. One of the greatest revelations that helped me is that I began to see authority. I want you to get this. Authority is not on the man. It is on the office. Spiritual authority doesn't rest on the man. It rests on the office because I know pastors and leaders, great 
men and women of God. And you know what? They've retired. They don't care the authority. They don't walk into the office telling everybody what to do or, hey, I'm having a staff meeting. No, they don't do that anymore. That is someone else's. They walk in. They they more than likely have a seat on the front row. They have the respect of others. They speak into the congregation, but they are no longer in that position of authority. So authority is on the office. It's not on the individual. And so when we see that, it helps us to understand that God is the one who established the office of authority. So if you've got this attitude, bless God, I ain't smitten to any man. Well, that may sound spiritual, but actually that's rebellion talking in, in deception. That's exactly what that is because you're going to obey your boss. You're going to obey uh, wherever you work. You're going to bring yourself under submission in the local church. It's the same. There is an authority. There are governing office, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and chief teacher. So when I recognize that that office is set by God, then I can submit to that. I can flow with that. I flow as though I'm submitting to Jesus and the truth of it. Here's the question. How many of you would not submit to Jesus? Well, I got news for you. He's going to rule with a rod of iron and no, no more negotiating. There's no more voting. When he established his kingdom, we are going to submit and we are going to flow. So I pray that's a revelation. The authority is on the office not on the individual. God bless you today, and I just release heaven over you. And don't forget, say this out of your mouth, something good is going to happen.